you want to do that? That's okay. Just pass That's fine. Yeah, I can pass that. <laughs> practiced general dentistry in his hometown for two years and then decided to attend the Nova Southeastern University <coughs> to become an endodontist. After obtaining his endodontic certification at Nova Southeastern University, Dr. Short worked as an associate endodontist and then opened his own practice um, known as Apex Endodontics located in Smyrna, Georgia. He's been featured in several publications, magazines, radio, television, internet, and journals. He's an expert and organic consultant to the Georgia Board of Dentistry and also an associate mm -hmm. clinical professor at the former Medical College of Georgia School of Dentistry. He's a member of several honorary dental societies and has received several awards and recognitions. Dr. Short believes in giving back to the community through volunteering to underserved populations. He volunteers through the Ben Massell mm -hmm. Dental Clinic in which dental services are provided at no charge and he also participates in several mission trips and mentorship programs. He is married to Mrs. Angela Short and they have two daughters, Jayla and Ava. Dr. Short attributes his success to an understanding and loving wife, kids, and kids, but most of all, to his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I present to you, in the Dunnest to the Stars, Dr. Rico Short. Thank you for the very warm introduction. Um, and I really want to really want to uh, thank uh, Dr. Carter and his wife for inviting me now uh, to come and speak to you guys tonight. Um, we've had a great time here, and um, so hopefully I'm going to, tonight I want to really um, thank my, my, my wife and my kids for coming down to support me. They typically follow me as long as it's somewhere local and fun. This is local and fun, so they'll come. If I go somewhere boring like Arizona, hoping no one's from Arizona, right? <laughs> they usually tend to say, well, wait till you get back. So, uh, so tonight we're going to be um, talking about a few things. I'm getting a little feedback here. Let's see if I can adjust the mic. We're going to be talking about a few things here tonight. But one key thing is um, we want to talk about purpose. By show of hands, how many of you guys feel like right now you and your God-given purpose? Raise a hand, raise your hand. We got a few, okay. Now, raise your hands of the guys who kind of feel like, I still don't even know why I'm here. And it's okay to be honest. Okay, we got a few honest people. And the people that they didn't raise their hand, they're just lying, right? <laughs> so, so anyway, um, I'm gonna kind of give you a little background about myself. You know, I'm actually a first generation, not just dentist, but professional in my family. And uh, like, like the young lady who introduced me, you know, I wanted to break the poverty cycle. And I grew up in an environment where there's a lot of uh, just negativity around me. And I just did not want to be a part of that. And I was just talking to uh, Curtis in here. I was like, you know, I remember one time growing up when um, you have to go in the middle of the night and get something out the refrigerator, you see these little critters crawling around. And you told me they were my friends, okay? Now, some of you guys don't even know what I'm talking about because you, you probably got parents that are professional and all, you know, went all. But I saw real roaches crawling around and thought that that was a part of normal life. That was a part of normal life. And then I realized that, you know what, I was very blessed to get a mentor. By show of hands, anybody have a mentor? Okay, we got one or two people. But this mentor came to my life in about the 10th grade and literally turned my life around. And he saw that I had the potential in me to do whatever I wanted to do, but I just didn't have the guidance. I didn't have someone to hold my hand. So tonight, we're going to be talking about that. And I hope through tonight, I'll be able to help you uncover what your purpose is and if you are really in your God-given purpose. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that. I'll be walking around because I know some of you guys are, you know, full and sleepy. I'm going to make sure you guys are, are, are sleeping on yourself. I'm going to wake you up. So God made you on purpose for purpose. So, first of all, congratulations to you guys again. 
celebrating 25 years of practice. So we, we're really happy with that. Because like you said, some people don't even celebrate 25 years of nothing. Or 25 minutes of nothing. So 25 years of practice is great. So, understand we have some humbling beginnings here. So, anybody recognize this guy right here, right? <laughs> That's the other guy. Where's the other guy? Raise your hand. Where's the other guy? The other guy, okay. The other guy, you in the middle, you're the tall guy on the end. On the end, okay. But this is Dr. Picard in the humble beginnings, and he said he was going to fix this car up once he finished dental school. And uh, I don't know if it's fixed up yet, but you know, I don't know if I waste my money on that. Like I got grass growing inside of that car. So, so anyway, um, he went to dental school. He graduated from dental school. I'm proud to say, went to the same dental school, which is uh, formerly known as the Medical College of North of Georgia in Augusta. And who knows what they call it today? They changed the name. Seemed like every other week, but that's what I call it, the Medical College of Georgia, Augusta. And also, um, Dr. Picard made some uh, headlines there. Um, he was the first patient, he was in the newspaper with this, and also he did some elementary uh, dental school screenings. So that's great, because now you know you got a guy that not only just cares about himself, but he also cares about the community, which is very, very, very important. Not only that, he even went abroad. And this is a picture of him doing some medical mission work in, in Africa. So, so that's great, and it's, it's inspiring for me to be able to see something like that as well. And of course, uh, Cheryl and Curtis, they're celebrating the 30 years of marriage. And I think that deserves a round of applause as well. <laughs> Doc, I, I think your hairline was a little bit further forward back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. So, God is awesome, guys. And He loves you. He loves you unconditionally. And sometimes we don't, we don't really grasp that depth of the love that He has for us. So I'm going to also talk to you guys more about that as well. You know, and he just really wants to just wrap his arms around you even when you just mess up. And that's what I want to really kind of get into your heart, that he loved in the spirit. It's like God made us in his image, and God is a spirit as well. So if he made us in his image, we were all spirits at one point. And then God said, you, Angela, you, Mike, you, get down to the earth, and there's a certain thing for you to do. Once you get that certain thing done, and then you're out. You're going back to where you came. So we're all spirit, and then we're actually placed in a physical body, a human body. That's to do those things that God called us to do here, and then we leave. Now sometimes we may not live up to 120. Sometimes it might be a very short-lived life, but in that particular time frame, as long as you accomplish the will of God for your life, you have really lived a fulfilled life. And a lot of people want to understand, well, you know, wow, you know, I had a loved one that died so early. In God's eyes, that's not early. He died right on time because guess what? He's the one that created them, and he stands outside of time. So he is the one that controls that. So no, that person died or passed away or went on at the proper time. And these are the things we got to get in our head and get into our heart to understand that. That's how he works. God is always good. So God knew everything about you before you were born. And Jeremiah 1.5 talks about that. That even here, before here, he knew everything about you. He knew what you were going to do. He knew what you weren't going to do. He knew how you were wired. He knew how you weren't wired. He knew everything about you. So when you mess up, it doesn't surprise God. You know how sometimes you mess up and you're kind of afraid to go back to God in prayer because you messed up? He already knew you were going to do that. He already knew you were going to do that. And guess what? He likes you to come back to Him. He wants you to be dependent on Him and not be independent on Him. He wants you to be dependent on Him. So, He knew about this guy. Anybody know who this guy is? The girl is? My daughter, you know what that is? Who is that? That's me. That's right. That's me. That's me. That's me, That's me right. And uh, the reason why I show this picture is because my mother did not want to cut my hair. And I'm like, Mom, you got to cut my hair because everybody thinks I'm a girl. you got to cut it. So eventually, I put enough pressure on it, then she finally cut my hair. And uh, then I was able to go to Morris Brown, so I got my hair cut. So then people thought I looked like Michael Jackson. 
So I went from Prince to Michael Jackson. I'm just kidding. So, uh, so anyway, I went to Morris Brown. Um, I wanted to pledge, pledge Alpha. I was practicing. I was, this is our dorm step show. So I was, I was kind of happy. I'm the guy in the middle with the, with the bird chest trying to get the six pack back. But it's kind of hard to choose over 30. Then I became a dentist. And this is me volunteering um, at a dental clinic. And I um, have my family here, Aiden, Jayla, Angela. And then I get to hang out with some of the stars. Everybody know who that is, right? Pat Riley. Pat Riley. And um, shortly after that, I become the root canal specialist to the stars. And I'm going to kind of talk to you about how I transitioned into that as well. Um, so, and also driving one of my dream cars. Yes, this is my car. Um, this is something that I work hard for. This is something that I don't, I don't, I don't have any apologies for. I don't sell drugs or anything like that. God's blessing on me afforded me to be able to have this car, and and also some other nice things. So I'm going to talk about that as well. Is that you know, nice things are good, but just don't let those nice things have you. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So how do we get to our dream? How do we get to our dream? And feel free. To get